Welcome to this week's edition of New York Now. I'm Dan Clark. Next Tuesday is a big day in New York politics. It's the second primary election day in New York this year. This time, primary candidates for Congress and state Senate are on the ballot, and whoever wins those races will go on to the general in November. So let's start there for this week's show with our panel. Bill Mahoney is from Politico New York, and Zach Williams is from the New York Post. Thank you both for being here. Thank you, sir. So this is a fascinating time to be in New York. I, I don't know the last time we had this kind of election system where we had a primary in June for governor and um, assembly, and now we have the primary for Congress and state Senate. It's, I'm not gonna go into the background of the redistricting mess, but we can just talk about some races and kind of the implications. Zach, what's going on in New York City? We have a few races that we're watching. Let's start with Congress. New York 10 and New York 12 are just fascinating. New York 10 in particular, because there are so many candidates on the ballot. <laughs> I was making a, a graphic for this race that I'll put up on the screen now, and just finding the pictures of these people, I was like, wow, there, there's a lot. So what's going on here? <laughs> well, we'll start with New York 10, which is the seat straddling Lower Manhattan and Brownstone, Brooklyn. Now, New York 10 used to be represented by Jerry Nadler, but he's now running in a Manhattan-based seat against Carol Maloney, more on that in a little bit. But this New York 10 race is just so huge. The only incumbent in is, is Representative Mondaire Jones, who currently represents a district north of the city. This is crazy. So you, you got him, <laughs> you got um, two members of the assembly, Yuli New and Joanne Simon, you got city council member Carlina Rivera, you got um, former Representative Liz Holtzman, the first woman ever elected a city comp comptroller, and I might even be, oh, and of course, Daniel Goldman, the former oh, right. House impeachment lawyer, who's really emerged as a front runner in recent weeks. Um, recent polling had puts him slightly ahead of New and Rivera. And of course, he got a huge endorsement from the New York Times, which in a super blue, super liberal district like that, I think Joe Biden won it by 73 points. Uh, endorsement from the Times really means something. Now in New York 12, it's a real bloodbath, a three-way bloodbath, in fact. This we race <laughs> is like fascinating to me because you have, and, and I don't mean to step on your Toes, but we have, uh, as you said, Jerry Nadler, longtime mm -hmm. congressman. We have Carolyn Maloney, longtime congress member. And then we have a, a kind of like challenger. I'm not really sure. Attorney Siraj Patel. This is his third time trying to take Carolyn Maloney down. Okay. Now, <laughs> the, the, the most fascinating thing happened in the recent poll that came out just on Thursday, yeah. which was, you know, at the end of May, Maloney was up by 10 over Nadler, and Siraj Patel was like 4% or something. But now, what is it, two months later, something like that? Nadler is almost has double the support of Maloney. Mm -hmm. Siraj Patel has has jumped to about 14, 15 percent. Maloney's now at about like 23, 24 percent. So it really looks like Siraj Patel is succeeding in beating Maloney. Yeah. But he's only helping Nadler win, um, which isn't exactly what he was hoping. But maybe there's you know the enemy of my enemy is my friend, and Siraj Patel will just be satisfied, kind of doing better against Maloney this time. Maybe hoping to beat Nadler in the future. That said, it's an open race. Um, still, we got a couple more days of voting, but it looks like Nadler might just beat long his longtime colleague, Carolyn Maloney, after all. Wow, it's going to be fascinating. Go ahead, Bill. Sorry. One thing I would say about all of these races, both those and some of the ones upstate we'll talk about in a bit, is I don't know if anybody should trust anything that we've seen with the polls so far. <laughs> yeah. Polling is based on predicting who's going to show up to the elections and vote. And you've, you usually have a regular baseline if, say, this November we know the types of people who tend to show up in gubernatorial elections and you can sample them um, to balance it out based on what the turnout will look like. We don't have any precedent for an August primary. So all of these races, <laughs> some candidates are consistently up in the polls, but maybe there's some whole segment of the population that's going to be you know, up in the woods in Maine or something this whole month and <laughs> people are including them in their polling. Um, there's lots of X factors like college students. Like they, yeah. during primaries, their turnout's not always great, but we've got some districts that are in these big college towns, especially upstate where this is the move-in week, next week is the move-in week. Is that enough time to get 5% turnout in those college districts? Like, <laughs> yeah. we don't know that. Like, we have nothing, absolutely nothing in New York's history to base this on. So there's a lot of guesses that are going to this polling even more so than normal. So it's not completely impossible that some of these races are going to be way off from what people are seeing in their internal polls. That's a really interesting point with the college campuses because there's been a push by Democrats in recent years to register those students on those campuses to vote as their address rather than their home address if they don't live in that area. So if they're not gonna vote in that place, then I'm wondering how that's gonna affect things in terms of kind of like a more moderate versus a far left challenger if we have any of those situations. There's definitely some of those situations and we can like, well, even one of the big races we have is not actually a primary. It's this special election between 
um, Pat Ryan and Mark Molinaro. Yeah, let's talk about that. Swoops over from the stuff near P um, Poughkeepsie, all it captures a big chunk of upstate, um, kind of, I call it like a bloated U around Albany is kind yeah. of the shape. <laughs> um, but like, look at a place like New Paltz. There is a polling site on campus. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I think it was uh, Joe Biden beat Donald Trump by something like 500 to 10 on that polling site. It's okay. um, not exactly a Republican stronghold. Pretty strong, yeah. Um, Move-in <laughs> weeks is like starts on Sunday and it goes until Friday, I guess, depending on what year you are at SUNY New Paltz. Okay. And so are they going to get any of those votes? Like, you know, even 50 votes, if it's a close race, that could make the difference if it's low turnout. But we have no idea if there'll be even five people showing up to this polling site. Um, 500 probably isn't out there, but you can look at all these college towns throughout upstate that are in some of these competitive districts. There's a couple of competitive Democratic primaries going on in the Ithaca area, for example. Mm. That's almost overwhelmingly um, college students over there and some probably some college professors who might be taking their last vacations before going back to campuses and stuff like that. So it's a big question of... Um, you know, that's just one factor, but there's a factor of people going on a vacation, snowbirds doing different things this time of year. Like, we just don't know what to base turnout predictions off of. Right, but the political establishment is clearly worried in some of these races. You know, you look at some of the campaign filings down the home stretch, um, not just in Congress, but in the state Senate races. You know, you have several incumbent progressives actually being targeted by the establishment, Gustavo Rivera in the Bronx, um, for one. And, you know, you have groups, whether it's um, a PAC affiliate with Eric Adams, or um, business groups or just other leading Democrats like State Chair Jay Jacobs just dumping thousands of dollars on some of these races. Conra Conrad Tillard just got $7,500. He's a um, uh, minister challenging um, Democratic Brisport. Socialist. Yes, Jabari Brisport in Brooklyn. He just got a $7,500 donation from one of these sources. And now in a race where it's only $60,000 um, in each of the campaign war chests, that can make a real difference, in especially in terms of getting out votes in a what will almost certainly be a low turnout primary. It really, it, it, it's interesting to watch the money side of it. You're absolutely right, especially with this race being so unique and as special as it is. I guess money will maybe make the difference in getting out that vote and making sure that people vote for whoever candidate that they are, you know, going to favor. Uh, Bill, we have about 30 seconds left, 45 seconds. Um, tell me about the race between Langworthy and uh, Palladino in Western New York. Well, that's certainly the top Republican primary this year in New York, where yes. State GOP Chair Nick Langworthy and um, Carl Palladino, the Buffalo developer who ran for governor in 2010, are facing off in this um, big district that includes some Buffalo suburbs and a large stretch of the Pennsylvania border. Um, that's gotten pretty ugly, unsurprisingly, <laughs> for anybody who has followed Carl Palladino's career. And, Paladino is most famously a, quite a firebrand who has a history of making overtly racist statements. He has dialed it back a bit this year with a bit more of a professional staff, and he came close to making it through this entire election without saying anything too horribly offensive. But well, then we just are, a couple days ago, he called for Attorney Mer General Merrick Garland to be executed. So that right, streak has ended. Not great stuff. We are at a time. That'll be an interesting race to watch to see how it turns out in the primary. But we are out of time. Bill Mahoney from Politico, Zach Williams from The New York Post. Thank you both so much. Thank you.